Welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Acts chapter 18 and I'm really excited to get into it. So before we get started, please make sure you like this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Also, there's a notification bell. If you click on that bell, you'll actually get notified every single time uh, we upload. So that's kind of cool too. Anyways, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. You have a message for us today, God. And so I thank you, Lord, that as we read these verses, as we, re we read your holy scripture, I thank you that we will hear with our hearts your message, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So Acts chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. So in these few chapters of Acts, we're actually seeing Paul's missionary journeys. And what's interesting is because it, it, it is it's our tendency to it's our tendency to read the Bible linearly, and that's not always the case. So as Paul is doing these missionary journeys, at the same time, he's writing letters that we actually see in the Bible. Um, like Philippians, his letters to Timothy, which comes a lot later, um, to the church in Ephesus, to, Coloss to the church in Coloss, the Corinthian church, which he goes to right here. So he as so keep this in mind that you know, first and second Corinthians and Thessalonians, like they don't necessarily they don't happen after Acts. They actually happen during Paul's missionary journeys and they happen some of them are written during his second missionary journey some of them were written during his third missionary journey some of them were written um like i can do all things through christ who strengthens me right like those letters were written when he was in prison so there's so i, I want to give you that context that when we read what happens in acts and then we read paul's letters after it doesn't mean it happens after because we actually end acts with paul awaiting trial in rome so it's not like he writes all these letters during that after Acts. Does that make sense? A lot of the all these letters are actually written during these um, journeys. So when so right here when you see you know after these things Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth, you see what happens in Corinth, and then later he writes a letter to that church first, and then he writes a second letter, Second Corinthians, to the church. So I want to give you that context. So as you read the Bible, you kind of have an understanding of what's going on that. In Acts, we see him traveling and doing these missionary journeys, but during these times, he's actually writing some of the letters that we read after Acts. Does that make sense? So, so after these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. Uh, verse 2, And he found a certain Jew named Achilla, born in Pont Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. Verse eight or verse three. So because he was, so because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. For by occupation they were tent makers. This is pretty cool. Um, that Paul, you actually see we, that we see Paul working. Like he's not just now. There's times where Paul receives offerings and he receives support, but he actually spends a considerable amount of time here in Corinth, so much that he, that he helps. Um, Achilla and Priscilla to make tents and he actually supports himself and it's pretty cool because he's not he, he he's so wise and just saying like you know he's, he's not just going to live here for a while he's actually for free he's actually going to make sure that he's being diligent and it's um and we see that here in verse 4 uh, he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house, coincidentally, was next door to the synagogue. So Paul here is preaching. And he goes to the Jews first to preach that Jesus is the Christ. And they start blaspheming. They start rejecting him. So he's like, fine. Like, if you won't listen to me, then I'm going to go to the Gentiles. Then Crispus, it's a good name, 
Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in the city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Okay, I, I, I want to go back to this verse, because this is what stuck out to me as we read this. And um, so verse 7, And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. So he, so he joins himself with a man named Justin, Justice, one who worshipped God. Then Crispus, Justice Crispus, <laughs> fun, fun names. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household, and many, and many of the Corinthians, hearing believed and were baptized. Okay, so this is amazing. This is what this is what we just witnessed here, okay? Paul is in proximity to the synagogue. In fact, he's right next door at the house of justice. And however it happened, whether Paul was going in the synagogue over and over again preaching, however it happened, the ruler of the synagogue gets saved and his whole household gets saved. And many of the Corinthians hearing, hearing, believed and were baptized. So maybe many of, the, many of the Corinthians who went to the synagogue now have a ruler in that synagogue who believes in Jesus. How powerful is that? Everyone say proximity. See, God has placed every single one of us in proximity. And, 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 and don't forget, in, in a couple of verses, God tells Paul, hey, don't be afraid. Speak up. I'm with you. You're not going to get hurt in, in this city. I have many people who love me in this city. Be bold and speak up. And that proximity of, the, you have this synagogue who's that, it's a place of influence, right? It's a place of influence. And then Paul is right next to it. And Paul being Paul, preaching, teaching, the miracles following, the ruler of this place of influence gets saved. And all of a sudden, every single person that goes to that synagogue can now hear the gospel from the ruler, Christus. What's my point? My point is, guys, we have people all around us that we are in proximity to. Whether you live down the street next to Pollo Loco or you live in the next city over next to an In-N-Out or next to um, a Dollar Tree or next to a Starbucks. Could you imagine if you were just Jesus in those places how would that change? Maybe, maybe, you may, may, maybe you live next to a small business and you get to know the owner and then all of a sudden that owner comes to church, has an encounter with God, except Jesus. And now that owner and his, and, 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 his, and his whole family gets saved. Not only that, but his company starts to do, uh, starts to, he starts to run the company the way God wants them to run the company. And then now his employees see that and then they want Jesus too. We're called, guys. We're, we, are, we have the same calling that Paul has. Now, I'm not saying that we have the calling to go on missionary journeys. I'm not saying that we have the calling to, you know, to go to this city and that city and, 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 and go preach. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, but we have a calling. We have a calling that in, 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 in the city around us, in the buildings around us, the people around us, we have a calling to at least try to introduce him to Christ. Paul does that. He did it with the Jews first and they rejected him. So he's like, okay, fine. And then he's with justice and because of justice's house in proximity to the synagogue, he's able to influence and have a major influence where the ruler of this synagogue literally gets saved and how much more influence, how, how much more gospel, how much more Jesus is preached because the ruler of a synagogue now loves Jesus. So I want us to take a few moments as we pray. Is Lord, highlight my neighbor. 
highlight the one in front of me. Highlight the business, the businessman, the, 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 the coffee shop, the fast food place, whatever it is. Lord, there is a place where you've called me to go to preach the gospel. See, we, might not be, we may not be called to go to different cities and different countries, but we're definitely called to go to different businesses and different places in our city and preach the gospel. We really are. Jesus did it, Paul did it, the disciples did it. Every single person in the Bible who loved Jesus, they preached the gospel and they went places to do it. And we are called to do the same. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Highlight right now by your Holy Spirit, Lord, what is your target? Who do you say my neighbor is that I'm called to go and minister and connect and just love and introduce them with the ministry of reconciliation? Reconciliation. We're called to recognize people to you, God. So show me which people that you've called me to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, in our description box, there is a link if you guys want to give. Thank you guys so much for supporting Daily Hope. And then beyond that, there is, um, or under that, or above that actually, there is a link for our reading plan. So you guys can follow along as we go through Acts and you'll know where we are after um, the book of Acts. And last but not least, um, I want to know what you got out of this chapter. I I love reading your comments of what your favorite scripture was or what what did you get out of this chapter. I love reading them. Um, So thank you guys for everyone who participates um, in the comment section. Again, I love, love, love reading them. And finally, at Hope, people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for Acts chapter 19.